Yep. Hello, everyone. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the Legends of Hurtball. Uh, before we get started, quick announcements. Uh, yes, it's been a little bit since we've had a session. My apologies. My uh, work schedule has been hectic, to say the least. Um, until we get more stable, um, these episodes might be a little sporadic for a little while. So please forgive me. Um, uh, um, so uh, in other news, um, I um reason why we've been away for longer than anticipated i had a um an operation done i will not go into the details but it, i found out that there was nothing wrong with me um the operation was to check on whether or not something was definitely ill with me so i'm just very thankful that nothing was too serious um unfortunately next week on Saturday, we will not be having any sessions of any sort because our little Rio will be um, at her convention. So as revenge, I must devise a way to torture her character. <laughs> I'm going to bring my baby boy in rodent form. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, let's see here. Is there announcement? Um, really quickly, I want to thank, um, I, I want to personally thank, uh, one person who went back a few episodes and found my Twitter and apparently they read up on my profile and they sent me many, many pictures of Basset Hounds. So I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> Basset <laughs> Hounds are by far my favorite puppy. And I love those dogs. Yeah, most likely. But it's it's still funny. But I greatly appreciate whoever you are. Um, it was amazing. I love I love Basset Hounds. They're adorable. They're the saddest, but they're the happiest fucking dogs on the planet. <laughs> anyway, uh, Rosie, take it away. Hi, guys. It's me. <laughs> I'm back. So what happened last time? Let me tell you. In no particular order, we last left our heroes with Ghost and the cleaning gang nearly dying to some very intense traps. Pretty sure there were some, if not a boatload, of Indiana Jones references at that point. Sunflower, our darling little mouse, finally recreated the three-step poison. An absolute breakthrough! So hopefully she'll get proper rest and a fucking break. Opalis finally reunited with her parents and met her little sister, Sapphire. At the end of the session, however, something happened. Clooney, no, Clovis' brothers, Cody and Christopher, appeared at the door of Redwall Abbey. Now let's get into some bullshit. And also the entire time Fluffy's character, um, Vince, was trying to find a certain white fox to make out with. Mm. I rolled for random shit for your character. It was funny as hell. I appreciate it. You know me so well. <laughs> well, okay, okay. I'll I'll update the people on what happened while while he was not here. So during our last session, he mostly was seen doing random stuff. So first, Fluffy, I need you to put something in your inventory if you don't mind. When oh, you get access really? to um, on my character sheet. Yep, you um, were fishing once again for some food for the Abbey and you fought off a, a adolescent pike and now have uh, three teeth from said pike. All right. I'll put this in my uh, additional, no, not additional uh, treasures area. Yep. yep. Uh, you also, um, I rolled for interestingly enough, uh, you uh, did some chores for the Abbey and you uh, were given a present for helping with chores. You were given an entire basket, roughly the size of your head, full of candied chestnuts. Chestnut, one word or two words? Candied chestnuts? Chestnut is one word. Okay, I just had to make sure. Yeah. It, uh, it is very unusual. Like some, some that you say nut with, uh, you actually separate it. But this one, it's actually all together. And last but not least, um, you um, helped 
Cry Hugo capture a candy thief in the kitchens. Ah. Now you would you would think someone of his advanced age, well, semi-advanced age, would be more mature than to steal candy. But Abbott Mortimer was apprehended um, smuggling candy to his quarters. <laughs> uh, Friar, <Steve>. Hugo, <laughs> Friar Hugo, from what you are aware, you are to make sure he cannot have any sort of desserts for the next week. Oh, <laughs> Friar Hugo's orders. <laughs> so that that's fun. That that's the fun part of what I had for your character. Unfortunately, you could not find the Arctic Fox. Uh, I remember somebody actually told me in one of the other sessions where she went over to a different abbot or not abbot. Uh, it was the church, Saint Ninians. Yeah, Thank you. Yes, no problem. You kept on meaning to go during this whole session, but things kept on coming up. They were like, hey, can you help? Hey, can you help? <laughs> yeah, my characters, I tend to do that, so. Anyway, back to the session. Now, we come back to the scene we left off with, with two rats oh, no. appearing oh, no. in the doorway. Opalis unawares. <laughs> As she's currently in another room. As the doors slam shut, Rio, you're just about to get some food when you come into the cafeteria and see these two rats. It's considered dinner time. You see uh, two enormous rats. One is literally the size of Clooney. In fact, they both look almost exactly like him. One is hold. Uh, one is holding himself very regally, with his hands clasped behind his back, standing up straight, with his chest a little puffed out. You see that his eyes, comparative to Clo- Clooney, Clooney has intense gray eyes, where this one has almost an emerald green. You see that he wears a very noble attire. Very, very well kept um, with a frock and a petticoat, very well pressed pants and a saber at his side. You see the other one is severely hunched over with a gnarled staff, one leg missing and a scar across his throat. His eyes, like he looks like he's had seen better days. And you see that his eyes are almost a sky blue. He looks like he's in very ratty clothing, hood, kind of like tattered clothing. The regal looking one notices you in the corner. And then within a few seconds, he's looming over you. He's very fast. <laughs> He's like, well, hello, my dear. Aren't you just a pretty thing? Brother instincts intensifies. <laughs> he, uh, before you can even respond, he grabs your paw and kisses it right on the top of your paw. <laughs> Constance. <laughs> Do I hear it? Uh, you hear all of a sudden a... Do I hear my sister screaming constantly? Yes. Everyone hears it. (laughs) I hear out screaming. The only one who doesn't hear it is this old hedgehog in the corner who goes, Hey, speak up. (laughs) Did you say constipation? I got some prunes. As you just see the badger mum just running down the stairs like, What happened? What? Uh, I'm, I'm seeing double. I'm seeing double. Clooney has doubled. What? Vince comes uh, walking in. Uh, he still has your sister's hand very gently in his own paw. Yeah. Rosie, you come in as well. <laughs> I just cock an eye at the rat and I just go, I'm just looking at him. Hey, what's the big eye? Um. He, he drops Sunflower's hand as soon as he sees Apollos. Well, hello, my dear bunny. How's it? Been? Yes, it is I, Christopher. How are you? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, 
How, how did you get here? Oh, well, you see, our dear brother sent us a letter. Oh. Clo I mean, Clooney sent us a letter saying that while he was away for these couple of days, he would like us to help protect the Abbey. I've missed you guys so much. She gives him, like, a hug. You see uh, uh, the other one hobble up to Vince. He gets uncomfortably close to your face. What? I like your eyes. They're in pants. Mm. What color is his eyes? Uh, sky blue. Ew. I like your eyes. They're pretty. <laughs> and that's where I leave this conversation. Hobbles off. Yeah. <laughs> you see the fox have a cheeky smile on his face. <laughs> he hobbles gently over to to a, to a table, sits down. Excuse me, Mister Mouse. If you don't terribly mind, I need some vittles. You what? Um, sorry for my brother. Uh, he means a meal. Can you get him some food, please? I'd greatly appreciate it. Farley Hugo hesitates, then goes to the kitchen. It's been a while, dear Paulus. I see that you didn't... I see that you remember us now. Yeah, so, that means to the head really took a lot. <laughs> yes, yes, unfortunately. Now, Clooney is a vagabond. Me, I'm a diplomat for peace. My brother, master of poison. I look over to Sunflower. <laughs> see, that's vanished. <laughs> oh, oh my word. <laughs> Now, tell me something, my dear. I know it's been a while, and I haven't been here in quite some... I haven't seen you in quite some time, but I have some pressing matters that I must ask you something. Okay. Is that mouse single? <laughs> As I hear that cox and I again, <laughs> I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> oh, Paula loses her footing for a sec. She's <laughs> like... <laughs> and for a sunflower's sake, I'm going to have to make a deception roll, aren't I? Um, no, I believe she's married. Uh, deception roll against his insight. But I'm not technically lying, though. She is married. She is married to work. Uh, <laughs> that's still deception, though. <laughs> Did he do it? Yeah, 13. Okay, I got a roll for, for him. Pipe me up. Oh, Rio. Oh, Polish just saved your bacon. He rolled a 12. And he's got a, he rolled the 12. And he's got a modifier of 11. Uh, he's got a modifier of 12. Yeah. He has expertise in insight, which is unfortunate. <laughs> I guess he believes anything Apollos would say. I don't know. It is a natural one. <laughs> and your point is? Oh. His head sinks visibly a few inches. Oh, that's truly a pity. She's quite lovely. Um, and we can hear her friends. It doesn't matter. Um, I can always, hopefully someday in the future, I can always find love. Buck up, Christopher. Buck up, Christopher. It'll be all right. Okay, I want to break character for a sec and just me I, I want to mention that why does Christopher kind of sound like a, pop a pompous Winnie the Pooh? Well, since it's now legal to do this online without any copyright strikes because it's on public access now. Yeah, no, no. I'm, I'm just saying that. Hey, Christopher, Christopher Robin. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah Christopher uh, does kind of sound like this, honestly. Oh, OK, uh, let's get back into it, shall we? No bother. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, as he slowly, like, puts, he's, he's like, well, even though I'm sorely disappointed, it's a pleasure to see you again, dear Polis. Now, would you care to join us for some supper? I would like to catch up. Um, sure. Can my family join us? I'll look oh, over to my parent right. and sister. Yes. And <clears throat> they quickly join you with, <clears throat> with Peach. Close behind, he sits herself directly across from Christopher and is giving the meanest death glare a Dibbon can possibly muster at her age. 
while he's like talking and he he eventually stops and he's like uh, my my dear little one what are you glaring at me so don't you get any ideas mister no you know polish Y'all went to each other. I grab her and and just like <laughs> she uh she's just a child. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, hey, you you, you want some food here? I, I shove some food into her mouth to keep her quiet. And you see, kind of, I'm chuckling in the background. <laughs> it's just she's just busy chewing the food all the while, giving him a death glare. Does she do the you know the, the where you put your two eyes? You you point to your two eyes and you point back. Yes, exactly. She's like, what you need? <laughs> um, dear, uh, 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 you hear your mother talk, um, uh, Apollos, dear? Yes? Who's this Clooney? Uh, um, well, he's a new friend, and he's a new defender of Redwall. He's definitely not a pirate. This anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it? <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> Did I do it now? Uh, I can only imagine her hand is trembling at this point. <laughs> IRL. Did I do it? Oh my god! Yes. Yes. A million times. It was just take a little bit Let's see here. And since they are your parents, they'll have advantage on insight rolls. That's the advantage of parents in all of my campaigns. Because I'm an asshole. <laughs> what? No, I Dis- just got my parents Disney back. Rules. Disney rolls. Disney rolls. No. Hey, I did pretty good with my, you know, single mother in Skyrim campaign. <laughs> well, I don't know why this is happening right now, but... Oh, so he's a privateer? Oh, that's great. He's a good person then. She believes you. You just hear me burst no. out laughing in the background. <laughs> no, no, I'm on no. the ground. <laughs> the insight roll was eight, actually. <laughs> you just hear me laughing in the background. Yes, yeah, since he's a privateer, maybe he's... Maybe he has a lot of money with him. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, maybe we can get him together with Opalis. They can go on a few uh, dates. Um, and, then, and then hopefully... Wait, 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 wait. No, no, um, uh, it's, uh, um... Opalis isn't going to lie anymore. She's just going to stuff her face with food as if insinuating, oops, can't talk with my mouth, fool. <coughs> And meanwhile, Vince is just dying in the corner. Yeah, I'm just laughing. No, I'm actually on the ground at this point. I'm just doing the, the banging on the ground. <laughs> because I'm laughing so hard. Exactly. Okay, switching over to DQ. Uh-oh. <laughs> Back to the death and destruction. So, you're currently in the treasure room after the uh, spike to boulder. Uh, it is starting to retract. It takes a solid 30 minutes for this to happen, for the spike ball to be retracted where it was. And like I explained last time, the destruction that it waked by activating all the traps is something to behold behind you. As you continue forward, <clears throat> the long hallway splits at the very end in two different directions. Left and right. What now, boss? Uh, we go forward. As he proceeds to walk forward towards the wall and continues to walk into the wall and then proceeds to go through the wall. He through the As you realize the wall is an optical illusion. I walk towards the wall and try to put my hand through it. It's literally Like, the stonework is made in such a way that you can't see the doorway. So, literally, your hand just open air. (coughs) You actually, as soon as you, like, look up, you see the archway of the door is made in such a way to where it's not obvious. Like, if if you're not paying attention, you would not see this archway. And you see, looking down on each of the pathways, (coughs) you see that both ways um about 
10 feet in, just drop into inky blackness. Is there a loose, a loose stone around me? Yes. I attempt One to feet. kick the loose stone into the hole. You... Okay, could I get a strength check, please? I want to see how good you kick it. Interesting. <clears throat> you gently... It, like, tumbles onto the floor and then goes out <clears throat> and is as if by cue. Yes, this exists, people. You see, you hear a... As you see a giant reptilian head snap up and grab the stone out of the air. As you see reptilian eyes look you dead in the eye as it retracts down. Long jaw filled with jagged teeth. I need a history check from you. History. Oh, zero on history. That's still pretty uh, decent. Not too bad. <clears throat> that one looks intimidating. Well, judging from the fact that it's a crocodile, it's, it looks like a giant albino crocodile. Like that Resident Evil crocodile you find in the sewers? Kind of, yeah. As it just looks at you, it retracts back in and you hear like the rippling of waves as you realize that the left hand side, definitely death. You have yet to try the right hand side, though. <clears throat> Do you want to see what might be hold on the right hand side or stave off? I shall carefully take a peek. As you carefully take a peek, give me a stealth check as you hear rustling. Ooh, very good. <clears throat> going to roll perception for this. What does my one eye see? Not much. Yes. Into, into my prison cell. Okay, I'll say again. This dude actually noticed me? He notices you. Yes. Damn. Okay. As you see, all of a sudden, two bright <laughs> eyes shine out of the darkness. This is some secret of Nim shit right here. I look behind me to see what the others are doing. Red Tooth is currently <coughs> going, nope, 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 nope. I'm not going to deal with him. I'm not going to deal with him. As something comes out of the darkness, I see you see big bird claws come out of the darkness. You see a mighty chain is around both of the legs. As you see, a gigantic eagle has been imprisoned in Castle Floret. All right. While holding on to my sword in one paw, I carefully step out of the darkness and reveal myself. Oh, you're a thing. Normally, I would consume your kind, but I have a favor to ask of you, small one. I'm listening. Free me so that I may go back to my family and in turn... I will not consume any of your brethren that are currently in this castle. And how can I trust your word? I am an eagle. We live by us. To break an eagle's promise is to play with death. I take a closer inspection of the eagle. How does he look like? It is a male eagle. Um, it is not what you've read, what eagles are supposed to look like in history books. Typically, eagles have like brown feathers from the neck down and white feathers from the neck up. This one looks like it was made of gold itself. Like, how is his like condition? Does it seem like he's been there for like a very long time? It looks like he is a little emaciated. But you do see that quite a number of recent skeletons are currently littering the floor around him. Apparently, some of Cheese Thief's men weren't the smartest of the group and decided to venture in. You can tell they are recent by the saliva still on their skeletons. May I ask you a question, Great Eagle? Ask. Who put you into those chains? The lord of this castle. When he was still alive, the great wild cat, Martel. He's been chained for a very long time. Yes. He's been in there for at least 30 uh, ish years. Very well, Great Eagle. For a great hunter should not die in a cage. But I would like to ask one more favor before I do. Give me a sec before 
before before you say that because someone just knocked on my door and I have to go kill them. Sorry about that. Anywho. Now, what were we saying? I kind of lost my train of thought. So I said that I was willing to release them, but I wanted to ask for one more favor before I do. And what is that, Ferret? We currently have a big beef with the current inhabitants of this castle. Do you mind giving a hand or a claw, in your case, in getting rid of them? He leans down his head. And you are instantly very grateful that he's at the end of his chains because his beak is like maybe inches away from your torso as he looks into your eyes. You can see that his eyes are also like golden. Aren't they your friends? Would you have an issue with me consuming them? They are no friends of mine. Which ones do you want to live? Which ones are to die? I'm going to see the, the, uh, Does he three. see the uh, the other the others behind me or no? I'm guessing the other three with you that I smelled are the ones you do not wish for me to consume. That is correct, Great Eagle. One the rest... smelled like blood. One smelled like inky darkness. And one smelled of very bad breath. I could smell it all the way down the hall. Very well. We have a deal. A deal indeed. I begin to go inspect the chains. The eagle kind of like retracts his like thing for a little bit. The key is on that wall. Oh, I look to where he is pointing. <clears throat> he points. He you look over and it's on. It is just like it. It is painfully close to the eagle. Like like, but it's just out of reach. You know, like it's on the opposite end of the wall. Like it is three inches just outside of this eagle's reach. So it's always been painfully close, but he could never reach it. Now that's just awful. Yeah, I agree, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> I go towards the keys and attempt to get them. Strength check. Oh, OK. <laughs> you needed at least a 13 to, to pick these up, but you are straining yourself. Because this key is enormous. It's literally the size of your torso, including your head. And it is made of solid iron. After all, these chains are pretty big to hold a mighty eagle. You drag it over. <laughs> Bloody thing. Yeah, you eventually drag it over and unlock one of the chains. As you, like, drag it over, you can hear the eagle, like, using its, like, claws and, like, you can hear the popping of the knuckles inside and the scraping on the on the um, stone floor, which is making grooves. <laughs> As you release the final restraint, the chains hit the floor. There is one long pause as the eagle looks at you, uses its claw to gently nudge you to the side and walks out as you hear and all of a sudden, within five minutes, all you hear is screams. Oh, boss, I'm sure that will make things much easier for us. Which is disappointing, to say the least. I was looking forward to using this hawk's egg. We could always eat it. Dick. I'm down. <laughs> like, like, no joke, you guys managed to get some of the rubble that you, uh, like, from the, like, the traps and everything. Mm -hmm. Gather it all together, make a little fire and everything. Start, uh, start. I didn't think we were gonna it. eat it now. <laughs> oh, goodness, start still cooking got it. Oh, what is this like that monster hunter like palico thing? <laughs> all the while, like all of a sudden, like you guys like grab some part of the eggshell. And you like use it as like pseudo bowls to like eat the eggs with. And like all of a sudden you just see one of uh, cheese these men like how me and just gets dragged back by one claw. <laughs> and you're just calmly just eating away. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those moments where you're you're watching him do his work and you're eating at the same time. <clears throat> Got classical music playing in the background while screams. <laughs> 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 kind of like that. 
No, that's why everything is in slow motion, and you hear Ave Maria playing in the background. Yeah. Everybody dying. Um, and with that little scene, we're going to take a short ten minute break. Anyone who needs to go potty or stuff like that. Here, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, let's go. All right, coming back on the scene as um. While you are enjoying the um, very calming music of classical uh, while eating a hawk's egg and enjoying the show, all the while while the overture for 1812 is playing while the eagle is going to town on Cheese Thief's men. You know, I never got his name. He needs no introduction. He is a unique eagle. As uh, oh, the eagle oh, oh, finish off, finishes off like the final thing, he stands regally as Clooney says, He is the king of all eagles, the golden one, otherwise known as. As the eagle steps forward very dramatically as to, as if to like give it like dramatic flair. Ramses. So write that down, BQ. <laughs> Yeah, I wrote it. I just wrote it down. Sweet. Ramsey's huh. the big golden eagle of death. <laughs> As he finishes off the final corpse, Ramses turns towards you all, his golden eyes shining. I feel rejuvenated. <sighs> the free air once again. As promised, I will not kill you or your friend. Spreads out his wings. Dexterity saving throws go. Dex. Oh, oh no. There goes there your egg. Go. <laughs> so you you um are thrown back into the hallway and you feel you skid to a halt. And then you're as you're like as you like try to gather yourself, you like rub your head a little, try to make sure nothing's broken, and then all of a sudden you feel your butt decline in position as you look down slowly as you see your butt is on a pressure plate not him that's killing you (laughs) dexterity saving throw (laughs) here we go again oh no as you look in every direction waiting for it to happen you hear a clicking sound off to the left side your head snaps to it and you see something Stop barely a centimeter away from your eyeball as you see a spear coated in a black ichor that's dripping. Stops right there. As you see the mechanism that was supposed to, whatever it was that was supposed to actually spearhead whatever intruder it was, was clearly ruined by that sheer gust of air that was happening because of Ramses. That was close. I look down to see uh, where I'm at in this uh, puzzle of death. You're currently smack dab in the middle, and uh, Red Tooth is currently thanking whatever gods he believes in because you just see one of the spears is inches away in between his legs, just inches away from his skin. Shadow, nowhere to be seen. <laughs> He's still alive, Red Tooth. What a shame. Asshole. <laughs> All right, I shall attempt to get out of this trap. Looney didn't even bother to move. He's still at the very end of the hallway, like it was a very nice breeze. He got a natural 20 on his dexterity. (laughs) If he had blonde hair, it would have been, you know, waving. Fabio. (laughs) You gather yourself up and he's currently, you see Clooney. Can I get a perception check, actually? Perception. Oh, where the hell was that number? (laughs) You see Clooney. Um is currently looking something in his paws and it looks to be a yellow flower that is very wilted. She seems to be touching it. And as he like quickly picks it up, you see that underneath it is a diamond encrusted golden ring. Ah, do I have any idea what a yellow flower may mean and its significance? well, you see that, the, uh, well, you've seen it before. Opalis gave it to him. Yeah. Dude. As you see him put it 
around his wrist and hide it underneath his clothes. I shall store that in my memory for later. I don't even know what that face is supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> now, say, ghost. Yeah, boss. He grins very wickedly. How about we loot this place for all we can carry? I would gladly join you right after I get out of this death trap. Oh, let me take care of that. Takes one of the spears and throws it with all of his might. You hear a shattering in the distance and you just see all the all the stones depress and go down. For a second, you think everything is going to go to hell. But then you see little stone slabs cover all the buttons and the floor is plain. I give a little hop so I don't get my foot doesn't get caught. It's your tail. He's not wrong. You do have a tail. All right, DQ. I want you to do something for me to make things interesting. I want you to roll me three D100s. Goody. Three D100s. Boop. Hey, I got my list right here. 62, 91, and 43. Okay, starting with 62. Ooh, you got some good stuff on the first one. <laughs> Mr. Ghost. I. You find a f- two full sets of s- brand new steel armor <laughs> that have shields that can detach from the rear of the armor itself. 91. Let's see here. Ooh, this is also very good. You find something called Serpent's Kiss. Give me a history check for what that is or medicine. Uh, history or medicine. Yep. Well, I got one in medicine, so I'll go for that one. Eh, oh well. You don't know exactly what it is, but you do know that from what you barely remember, apparently Serpent's Kiss is a very extremely rare herb. Extremely rare. Mm, Think of a little mouse that could probably use this. Because the only way to get a serpent's kiss, the herb only grows where a serpent um, leaves behind its meals after it's done. And that's how the herb grows. Gross. Yep. (laughs) Befriend a snake, man. (laughs) 43, let's see her for, oh no. Okay, you find a box. Just a box. There is something in said box, but you will have to find out how to open it. Mm. Does it have a lock? Yes, it does. Mm. I do not find any key, correct? No. And obviously I already tried to attempt to open it and it does not open. Well, you jangled it, yeah. Tried breaking it open, but it's a pretty big lock. I'll just take it with me for the time being. Okay. Mystery box. Yep. What's in the box? As you head out of the front foyer. Don't open the box. Don't do it. You go out the double doors of Castle Floret and start heading home. Because this is all you guys can carry. The rest of your group has had their own loot that I also rolled for prior to this game. Make things interesting. All right. So before like we move on to the force and whatnot, I'm going to make a comment saying, you know, for all the jobs I've done, this one was kind of fun. As you say that. <laughs> what was that? You feel the backlash as you see Castle Flora explode in flames. Well, that happened. He didn't do you anything. You think someone's going to be pissed about that? He didn't do anything. It was actually a certain someone who took a box. <laughs> yeah, actually, the box was holding down a pressure plate, which in turn activated a booby trap that exploded a lot of barrels with gunpowder. Eh, nobody will know. And if they do, they will never find the body. <laughs> I shrug and continue on in my journey. As you continue on, it takes you quite a time to get back to Redwall Abbey. The Red Tooth is already bragging and showing off his loot, which is not all that impressive, but some of the other rats find it impressive. There, he managed to find one sparkly white glove, <laughs> two 
He also managed to find this. This one's by far my my favorite thing, which is kind of ironic when you when you think about it. Is the uh, Martell's personal toothbrush? Hey, look! He can brush his teeth. <laughs> Number three. I doubt it will help with his breath. A keg of expired milk. So it's cheese. Mm, kind of. Not the very good kind. Mm -hmm. Shadow stores all of his stuff in a burial mound and just guards it. He don't see whatever he got. Clooney. I thought he would put it in his like slip space within his coat or something. <laughs> Clooney currently has one of the items in his palm. And you see he stores the other two in his tent, which from the glimpse you got, most of it is very shiny. But what you see him qu quickly head towards the abbey. Proposal gifts, I assume. Not sure I spelled this right, but. Yeah, you spelled it right. OK, I just had to make sure it was like dowry. <laughs> As <clears throat> you go to the abbey yourself, Clooney, opens up the doors. Do we see another rat casing Apollos yet? No. <laughs> but he does see Christopher currently picking up something from the ground, but it looks like he's on one knee next to Apollos. Hmm. What's this I see? Hi, Clooney! Apollos, like, basically just pushes Christopher over oh and Clooney. <laughs> <laughs> and you you hug him and he's like ah, hello how are Again, you Vincent mm. how was your mission good as he proceeds to gently take your ears and slip something on them and retracts his paws he did what to my ears he, he slipped something onto your ears you know, to, to make sure that everyone knows that you're his property, you know. As he retracts his paws, he reveals a little glass of a mirror. And you see on your ears, he has placed little ringlets that are in the shape of roses, but they are solid gold. Rose <laughs> gold. A present. <sighs> okay, what would Apollo say? Um, <clears throat> thank you so much. <laughs> I can't, I can't. Hold on, I can't do the voice of smiling. Give me a sec. <clears throat> <laughs> thank you so much, Clooney. It's beautiful. My pleasure. As he gives you a hug, and everyone <laughs> else, everyone else, see him glaring at his brother, and you just see Vincent laughing again. <laughs> Um, there was some food on, on the floor. He was trying to be polite. Don't you to eat food off the floor. I can't help it. Food is food. Cody, don't eat food off the floor. But it's delicious. It's, it's dirty. Well, I'm glad I'm back now. It's good to see you, brothers. Oh, Cody, you have to meet my family. As he says this, you raise your mouth up to actually like say this. He goes in for a kiss on the forehead and you end up getting kissed on the lips. You hear Vince just go Woo! <laughs> off in the background with the cheeky smile. There is a solid pause. And that's where we end our session today, folks. Of silence. Well, other than Vince's woo. <laughs> of oh, silence goodness. as all you hear is gas from your parents. Oh, oh crap. That's where we're going to end the session. <laughs> <laughs>